Okay folks, here we go with another episode, another tip on Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 2. This week we're going to be looking at importing images and I think it's important that before we start going through the process of importing images we talk about the file formats, the image types that are actually supported. So let's go ahead and take a look at those first. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about each of the file formats that you can load and store in an Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 2 library. To start with, we have the RAW format, commonly uh, known as Camera RAW in the Adobe circles. Uh, in fact, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 2 and Photoshop use the Camera RAW engine. Uh, a lot of the, you know, compact higher-end compact cameras and DSLR cameras now support what's called the RAW format. That's my personal format of choice. The reason being is it allows me to go back afterwards and tweak a lot more of the settings and have a lot more uh, ways to manipulate the image in the various applications than you do with say a JPEG format. And the nice thing about Camera Raw files, you know, you're working with that raw file that essentially comes off the sensor. There's no processing involved with the camera, so you're just getting that raw data coming straight in there. Next up we have the DNG, the digital negative format, which is a format created by Adobe. Um, essentially what it does, it's a, they, they call it a generic raw format. Um, you can actually store your raw files or your JPEG files in the DNG file and it stores the settings in there as well. It's like a little self-contained package. We also have the TIFF file, the tagged image file format. Uh, very popular uh, with a lot of uh, you know graphic artists and that it has alpha channels um, I don't use them much myself but they were uh, a long-standing format and very popular and we have the JPEG file which of course you know is very familiar to us all on the web and you know I've not yet found a camera that doesn't allow the creation of a JPEG file and then finally we have the PSD the Photoshop format file now there is a, a special little note to pay attention here, which I've put in here. Use compatible PSD format when saving with Photoshop. Now what does that mean? Well let's go ahead and talk about that for a second. If you use Adobe Photoshop, uh, which many of us do, you know, th there is a particular setting in the preferences that I like to check so that I don't have to worry about this. Um, I use Photoshop CS4 and in there there is a preference that you can see on the screen maximize PSD and PSB file f compatibility. Now I always set that to always. Uh, the other options in you have in there is ask and never. The reason I set it to always is I don't have to think about it. Now what, what does it actually do? Well essentially what you're saying is when I save my my PSD file from Photoshop CS4 I would also like you to store in that file a version that is compatible with previous versions of Photoshop and applications that load the PSD, the older PSD format. So you don't have to worry that, you know, uh, Lightroom or whatever the other application may be is capable of supporting a Adobe Photoshop CS4 file format. You only have to worry that, you know, it can load a PSD file because you've got that old backwards compatible version in there. Now if you leave it to set to ask, which you know a lot of people do and it is the default option, then when you save a PSD file you'll see this dialog come up and you want to check that tick box there that says maximize compatibility and that is saying yep go back store that older file in there so that you know these old applications like Lightroom can go ahead and load the file. So you know that's the file formats that Lightroom supports. Um, personally, I recommend you know storage sizes these days. We don't have to worry too much about file sizes unless you're moving them around the web. So I would go into Photoshop if you use it and set that maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility format to always. So you don't have to worry about ticking that little checkbox or saying OK and cancel every time you save a PSD file. Okay, we're back in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 2 let's go ahead and import some photographs I'm gonna go file import photos from disk this time if you had a camera connected you could go import photos from device and what I've got here is I'm pointing to a folder on my desktop where I have these CR2 files which are raw files from my Canon 50D I just copied them from the card onto a folder on my hard drive I'm gonna go ahead and say choose 
and we have this dialog come up. Let's cover some options here quickly. File handling. You've got add photos to catalog without moving. Generally not a good idea. You're saying, you know, please use the files that I have in this folder on my desktop. Now why is that a bad idea? Well, let's say you, you know, you delete that folder from your your desktop. Well, the files are gone. Photoshop's not going to be able to find them anymore. Um, the other two, personally, you know, these are the two that I use the most. Uh, copy photos to a new location and add to a catalog. I store my photos on an external hard drive. In fact, I actually store them on two. Um, I cannot stress how important it is to have a backup of your files, especially photographs, you know, memories and things like that that you may not be able to go back and do again. And once they're gone, they're gone. So I like to copy the photos to a new location on an external hard drive and then tell Lightroom where they are, you know, this is where they are, go work with them. The other option is to essentially do the same thing but move those files to that location. Um, we're going to use that one in this particular instance. And the last one is copy photos as digital negative DNG. Remember we spoke about that file format earlier on and add them to a catalog. So essentially that's the same as copying the photos in my case to an external hard drive but converting them to this DNG format as we go. Um, in this particular case I'm just going to go with copy photos to a new location and add to catalog. Uh, the location for, this, for the sake of this video is just going to be a folder on my hard drive here. Um, for organize you have the option to organize them by date, um, you know, the, the day that they were taken. So let's say that you're on your card, you know, or your photos were taken over a span of five days. Well, Lightroom's going to go in and look at those dates for the files and organize them accordingly into folders. Uh, personally, I like to put them into one folder and then use this next option here, which is put in subfolder. I think of these subfolders, which appear on this folders panel over here, as being my projects. I have a folder for each project. So I'm just going to call this one Sample Project and it's going to put those files in a folder called Sample Project within my Pictures folder for my user folder on this machine. Don't re-import suspected duplicates. You're telling Lightroom, hey, if you think you've already got this file in the library, then please don't import it again. Generally, good idea to leave that checked. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, backing up is important, so you have the option to say as you're doing this, please copy these files to another drive, another location at the same time. Going down here, for the template, the file name template, personally, you know, you can put these custom names in and call them whatever you want. Personally, I like to use the keywords and the other metadata to, you know, control and use my photos. So I just leave it set to file name. I don't really care what this file name is because, frankly, I'm never going to look at it. So I leave it set to that. Develop settings you have the option of using one of the Lightroom presets and applying that to the file as it comes in. I always leave it to none because I like to you know, go back and process each file separately later on. Metadata is something that's super important for your files and we'll cover that in a separate movie so we're going to leave that for none for now. Um, keywords, let's just remove those keywords there. This is going to come into play in a second. I'll, I'll go back to this. Um, initial previews, I leave it set to minimal. You know, you can set them to embed and sidecar. Uh, just a standard size or a one-to-one -one preview, um, which you know will come into play for a separate movie later on. So I'm just going to leave those to minimal for now. This is a nice one here. Click Show Preview, and it's going to give you a preview of each of these files. So you know, as you can see, we have five pictures here, and I can actually now go in and uncheck the ones that I don't want to import. So only the ones with the little check mark will be imported. I'm actually just going to leave them all checked for now. Uh, one other little thing here, you know, you've got this control here to, if you want to change the size of the thumbnails before you import them, um, you can go ahead and change that. So going back to the keywords here, you know, you have the option to add some generic keywords upon import and I really recommend this, you know, doing this. This is a good idea. Keywords is a fantastic way to go and find your pictures quickly, especially on a large library. So looking at these five images here, you know, there's some common characteristics here. They're all flowers. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add flowers and I'm going to add another keyword of floral. So they're going to get tagged to these files that they import. Um, now once I've done that, I'm just going to hit the import key. It's going to suck in those files and as you can see, you know, it's made this this folder over here that I've called sample project and put them in there. So I can just click on there and there they are. There's the files. Um, they're also down here in the film strip. That is the, how we import files into Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 2. 
Uh, next time around, we'll start working with these files and looking a little more in depth at some of these panels. That's it for this week. Thank you.